What's up, gang, and welcome back to Principles Fat Loss for Life. This is our first in the series that we're going to be doing. Um, I had a hard time deciding where to begin because there are so many places that I could begin and so much I can talk about, and I can talk for a very long time. Go out on a lot of tangents, uh, and I had a full, really long thing planned that I thought was too long and uh, maybe too philosophical for the first one, even though they're all going to be very practical. So uh, I chose the most zoomed out and fundamental perspective for the principles that I could for this one. I tried to take it back as much as possible and shrink it as much as possible. And what would be underlying throughout everything? And the one that I chose is very unemotional and very uninspiring, but it's meant to do exactly that. If you need motivation, if you need emotion, then we have a problem. This is going to take the need for emotion or the emotional attachment um, and the need for motivation and the motivational dependence out of the tactics and strategy. So it's not like we're going to get on this plan. We're going to focus. We're going to go hard. We're eliminating all of that. The connection to hardcore greatness and success and failure and the fight mentality and the no days off, hard work pays off. You know, I'm waking up and getting a pump at four o'clock in the morning, like The Rock and Joe Rogan. We're not doing any of that stuff. So principle number one, which is a universal principle. Let's see if the mouse will go here. It's a universal principle. So it is our fat loss for life, but it falls under the category of universal principle. Principle number one, everything is just math. I say it a lot in the gym, a lot more lately. Let's learn. Everything in all of life, uh, but certainly with fat loss and everything we're doing in the gym, it's just a math equation. And because of that, the outcomes are predictable and repeatable because it's just a math equation. So we can recreate what we want to do over and over and over again, and we can predict the outcomes if we can understand and manipulate the equation. Just because it's a math equation though, and we say that we can figure it out, doesn't mean it's simple. It is very, very, very complex. And there's a lot of factors that can impact a lot of different variables and nothing functions independently. They're all dependent on each other. They're all connected. Your sleep's gonna impact your hunger, which is gonna impact your calories in and your calories out, your workout performance, everything else. They're all connected. When one changes, they all change. It's crazy complicated, but you don't have to worry about the majority of the mechanisms that go into that crazy complicated mathematical equation. It's not something that's foreign and out of reach, and most of the complications uh, or most of what makes it complex don't actually matter to you. What we're going to do is aim for the keys, key logs, the principles that have the largest impact on the system as a whole, and we're going to focus only on those. And when we hit those majors, that's going to drive the system to mostly regulate itself. So with all the different variables that can have so many different impacts, and you can think about optimization of everything we're talking hormones sleep schedule exercise schedule time of day food timing food sources on and on and on if we just hit the major ones it'll help us regulate the entire system we don't have to worry about getting into the weeds of the tiny details and how those things might matter certainly not before they matter calories in versus calories out that's a math equation that's one we all know it's just basic energy balance and that's going to be the thing that drives everything so here's the math calories in versus calories out or calories in minus calories out is the total change that we're going to see. So if we take in 2,500 calories per day, we put out 3,000. That's a 500 calorie per day deficit, which is going to equate to about one pound of fat loss per week. But not all calories are the same, Michael. And when people say that, that's cool, but they are. A calorie is just a unit measure of energy. To say not all calories are the same is like saying not all miles per hour are the same when you're driving. But they are. They're just a unit of energy. That's it. They're just a, a measurable unit of energy. So they are the same. Let's not get that confused. It's important to hold on to that. If everything is just math, it is very important to hold on to that part. So the calories that you eat, the sources, they may have dis different responses. They may impact the equation in varying ways, but they're still just the same unit of energy measure. Calories, a calorie is a calorie. Plug it into the system how it plays out, whatever, it's important to hold on to that. Now, this doesn't dismiss the calorie food sources impact on the system. It doesn't dismiss its nutrient density, the hormone responses, but 
even those things are still just math. So the nutrient makeup of the food that you're consuming, of the calories that you're consuming, and the impact that it has on hormonal responses in your system, those are also just math and impact the math equation. That's it. Here's an example. If you have low thyroid hormone, T3, that can reduce your basal metabolic rate by up to 25%. That can lead to weight gain and require you to take meds to normalize your total daily energy expenditure. However, it doesn't automatically lead to weight gain, and it doesn't prevent you from losing weight. I've heard that before. It caused weight gain and it prevented weight loss, but that's not exactly true. It can lead to it based on the math. So here's an example of what that looked like. If your basal metabolic rate is 1,750, low T3 caused a 25% reduction. So that takes your BMR down to 1,315, roughly. That's the math. That's all that there is to it. So understanding that everything is math as our basis. And I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible and follow it up with a more uh, little series of videos the rest of the week, maybe do a bigger, longer one in the future. But this principle is connected to other principles that we need to, to really understand. Okay, so everything is just math. One of the other universal principles that we're going to follow up with immediately that's directly connected to this. You have to start thinking of everything in bets. It's all odds and probabilities. It's all risks and rewards. Nothing is absolute. It's an open-ended math equation that's going to impact the odds, probabilities, outcomes, the risk involved, and the reward that you can gain from it, but that's all still just math. So we want to look at all of our decision-making and the way that we stack our strategy as bets. When it comes to tactics we're going to use, it's all risk-reward. That's it. Uh, a fat loss principle for life that's directly related to and will be one of the first follow-ups to everything is just math is you have to give yourself unconditional permission to eat whatever you want, whenever you want, in whatever quantity you want, all the time, guilt and shame free. No matter what, you have to do that. And I'm going to dig into that one in the future, but it's super important that you give yourself permission to do that because if everything is just math, this is just a piece of the math equation and you are still able to work it in your favor. Because if you understand the math and you stack the odds in your favor and you follow the other principles that we're going to teach, you won't do any real damage if you want to eat whatever it is that you want to eat, whatever quantity you want to eat, whenever you want to eat it, it's no problem. Obvious examples being holidays, vacations, um, social outings, whatever. You have to do that because that's how the math works. An example uh, of things that people say. So I have one person that's been doing this for a very long time. And when we're sitting down for lunch, sometimes he'll look at me and he'll go, I was bad this week. And I'll be like, yeah, why? I was just, he says, I had a donut. And when he's doing that, he's being sarcastic. He's joking. If he wants to have a cookie, he's going to have a cookie. If he wants to have a donut, he's going to have a donut. If he goes out to eat and he wants to have dessert, he's going to have dessert. If he wants a snack, he's going to have a snack. It doesn't really matter because he's following all of the other principles and he's not being bad when he wanted to have it. He has it when he wants to have it and he doesn't when he doesn't, even though he used to have it an insane amount. He genuinely doesn't want it or need to anymore. That's an example of everything is just math. Thinking in odds, bets, probabilities, and outcomes, and unconditional permission to do whatever you want. He's free to do anything that he wants. He's making all the choices consciously, guilt and shame free all of the time. That control is established by applying all of these things across the board. Now, things that people do say that are not real or true that we have to get rid of. I had a cheat day. No, you didn't. You just you know approached the math differently that particular day, but it's probably totally fine because the math works out. You didn't cheat on it. You just did a different math strategy. Cool. Or use different tactics that day. I fell off the wagon of the diet. No, you didn't. Don't say that. Vacations ruined it. No, no, they didn't. It's still just math and you can extend the averages, which we'll go back and look at averages and learn about that. But these things are things you got to stop saying because it's not, that's not real. You didn't cheat on a diet. There's no chance. You didn't fall off the wagon. That's not real. What we need to do with this, everything is just math to really dig into it is we got to dismant dismantle our current limiting beliefs. One, carbs are not evil. They don't call it math, magically cause you to gain weight. The ketogenic diet is absolutely not superior to weight loss and fat loss, especially over the long term, but certainly not in the short term for people that are not already metabolically healthy. Keto is not superior or special. You don't need to do cardio, like literally at all, to lose weight. Exercise is not a punishment or it's not to burn off what you ate. So Halloween's coming up, and every year on Halloween, you see these posters. If you eat this many Oreo cookies or this Reese's cups, you have to do this many burpees, this much Stairmaster, this much cardio just to burn it off. No, you don't. That's not how it works. That is not the math at all. And whoever came up with that idea uh, is somebody that has a terrible, terrible, terrible relationship with food 
you know, and life and quality of life and happiness, because that's not how it works. Don't try to do it that way. Don't look at it that way. You don't need to do circuits. You don't need to do boot camps. You don't need to do CrossFit specifically related to fat loss and weight loss. You don't need to do them. You're not dependent on them. There are no smoothies or detoxes or supplements that are going to allow you to magically burn off 20 pounds of pure fat in 30 days. Not without the math working out and adding up. And anything that creates that drastic of a change impacts a lot of variables in unfavorable ways. And uh, there's somebody I'm going to talk about a lot and share all their stuff because they're promoting like how to lose 20 pounds of pure body fat in 30 days from drinking these smoothies. And uh, it just is completely made up. It's magic. It is fantasy. There's nothing true about it. This is not how it works. So we got to stop telling people to do it. And you guys got to stop listening to assholes and stop spending your money on that stuff. It's just math. And when you learn the math and you look at the math, you're going to be in a much stronger, more controlled position. Here's some math. If you have 100 pounds to lose and you cut your current calories by 10 or 20%, this means your body weight is stable, but you have 100 pounds to lose. So the amount of food you're eating per day right now is about your maintenance because you're not gaining or losing weight. If you cut your total calorie intake of what you're currently eating by 10 or 20%, you would lose about half a pound or one pound per week which would take between two to four years to successfully lose 100 pounds. And I know you want to do it faster. And I know you want to make it quick and easy or whatever, but you have to look at the math and say, hey, if I'm making this change, the expected time to get there would be this. And that's if you do it nonstop, which is not the most advantageous. That's not giving us the best odds. Um, it, diet breaks would be a much better strategy. So laying out the timeline with the math and accepting that you're going to have to be patient is a huge factor here. That's math. That's just the math. Uh, on a side note, if you have 100 pounds to lose, you can do it faster than what I just showed. It's not have to take you two to four years. Absolutely not. You can do it way faster. You just got to manage the math to work in your favor, which is how we do it. We don't tell people it's going to take that long necessarily. Um, you can do it much faster. That's okay. All diet and exercise programs, they're just tactics to help you control the system equation. Nothing more. So keto, Paleo, vegan, Mediterranean, if it fits your macros, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, all that other stuff. It's just to help you manage the system's equation. Same with boot camp, CrossFit, strength training, cardio, whatever. It's all just specifically to help you manage the equation. There's no magic in it. There's nothing special about it. Don't put magic into the tactics. I tried to stick to keto, but I bent the rules a little bit and I just quit entirely. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's just a math equation. So you can use the tactic of keto for as long as you want. And then when you want to bend the rules, you can bend the rules as long as the math equation adds up. But there's nothing special or dependent uh, when it comes to any of these tactics. It's important to understand. Here's a truth. Exercise alone is a terrible strategy for long-term weight management or fat loss. Exercise alone by itself, meaning it's the only thing that you're trying to do to lose weight. Terrible strategy. Diet's the most effective thing you can do to lose weight. Exercise is for sustainability and health. Couple them together if you want to make a real change. Without a shadow of a doubt, because that's what the math is going to be the driver for. And that's what we're going to go over real quick. Some 